choose to go on it, you think it's real because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills and it's very brightly colored and it's very loud and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time and they begin to question, is this real or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered and they come back to us and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid ever, because this is just a ride. Yeah, it's like a ride and in many indigenous cultures, including all the mystic streams preceding our mainstream religions, reincarnation has been an essential part of their teachings. We are spiritual beings coming to this earth to make a human experience. The wisdom of the ages is returning and many people are publicly describing what they learned during their near-death experiences. One of the most popular figures here is Daniel Brinkley, who was clinically dead three times, twice after being hit by a lightning. As a species, we mostly either dismiss the idea of reincarnation as unscientific or we are panic-stricken, facing a potentially angry God who apparently has nothing better to do than counting our sins and throwing us consequently in flaming hellfires. And again, the glue holding both attitudes tightly together is our perceived separation. We are either decaying back into random dust or alternatively some God outside of us keeps weighing deeds and sins before her eternal judgmental fist cracks down on us. The thing is, if we don't understand death, how can we ever understand life? In Bodies of Light, Bill Viola has created a video piece that was inspired by tantric Buddhist descriptions of the dissolution of the body during the process of dying and rebirth. In 1997, the Stanford researcher, Father Francis Tiso, investigated the death of a man who had been taught a certain type of Tibetan meditation, where the person learns to connect with the residual 99% of, of their DNA in order to transform it. The Sogen technique, also known as the rainbow body technique, enables its skilled practitioner to transform their physical vehicle into a light crystalline substance gradually shrinking it before it finally disappears, leaving apart from fingernails and some hair only a beautiful rainbow. If we can establish as an anthropological fact that what is described in the resurrection of Jesus has not only happened to others, but is happening today, it would put our view of human potential in a completely different light. This knowledge has been essentially hidden from the public because after all there is profit to be made from humanity's fear of death. It's about time to switch on the dormant parts of our DNA and remember that if we choose to learn the art of dying we can finally start to learn the art of living. So why was I making this huge point about reincarnation and our potential immortality? I do believe, and luckily enough, there are many researchers walking alongside me on the path of consciousness expansion, that time itself is not linear, but rather cyclic. And that furthermore, the secret of life itself is movement. Without movement, there is no life. In his book, Undoing Yourself, Christopher S. Hyatt quotes an interesting model which is based on Wilhelm Reich's idea of four distinctively different developmental stages that every living organism runs through in order to be called successful in whatever kind of endeavor. You charge, you peak, you release and you relax. So you can charge again. If you get stuck in one of the stages, let's say you can't shit in the sense of the world, it's quite difficult to start anything new while still carrying the old stuff around. 
think about it. If you don't know how to complete this basic cycle, you cannot move on with your full power, connecting into your full presence. So now let's talk about all the old stuff we carry in around and why it's important to become aware of it so we can let it go. Being fully present literally prevents us from dwelling over milk spilled a long time ago or worrying about a future that will most probably never happen anyway. We are living memory banks. Any negative emotion that is not fully faced and seen for what it is, in the moment it arises does not completely dissolve, it leaves behind a remnant of pain. Every cell in our body is alive and intelligent and will hold on to, tra to trauma which we choose to forget because we do not want to be reminded of the powerlessness that underlies every traumatic situation. In his book, The Trauma Spectrum, Hidden Wounds and Human Healing, Robert Scale explores the insidious spectrum of culturally based trauma that shapes our life. He claims that 100% of the population has been traumatized to a certain degree and we mostly still carry these unaddressed painful experiences around with us. These accumulated traumata that we keep holding on to are leading to chronic conditions and numerous incurable deadly illnesses aside from the subtle stress our mind-body-spirit connection is subjected to on a 24-7 basis. This is simply due to the fact that our system cannot distinguish between real danger and our habitual perception of stress factors triggering repressed memories we keep dragging along. Unaddressed fear and pain gets pushed underground and is being stored up in our cellular memory banks and like every shadow it starts following us, controlling us from the deep dark forgotten chambers of our soul. If we are prepared to listen, instead of suffocating life through our self-righteous judgments, our shadow will speak to us, allowing us to become whole so we can extract the teachings that comes with everything that has ever happened in our lives. Emotions are the language of our souls, and in the same way as our repressed emotions can lock us into unconscious, habitual cycles of self-destruction, they also do have the power to liberate us because they are profound vehicles for processing life itself. Through feelings we are capable of registering frequency change. The logical mind does not register frequency change. In traditional metaphysics, emotions have always been connected with water, flowing, endless transformations, forever changing. Our bodies are consisting mostly of water and our internal waters are powerful conduits for profound transformation. A beautiful visualization of the productive relationship between our feelings and the ways how their projected intensity is impacting and transforming water as a powerful medium are the photos of the Japanese researcher Masaru Emoto. To reclaim the power of our feelings is to facilitate a graceful attunement with the power of change, which seems to be the only real constant in life. It is one of the most important lessons for humanity to not just accept our emotions, but to actually love and embrace them. The power of our feelings are gracefully teaching us the art of letting go, of joining into the eternal dance of birth, life, death, and rebirth. The power of flow is the power of now and an initiation to life itself. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Okay. <laughs>